So let's dive now in what is actually happening in a self-attention layer. So here I have the word or token embedding that is going to help me generate a vector representation of the different tokens that will be inputted into the model. As part of the self-attention layer, we have three different linear layers. Here I'm representing them as being squared linear layers, but they can have different sizes. The important is that the number of input features is the same as the number of elements that we have in the different vectors in the word or token embedding. Typically, the size of the vectors in the token embedding is called the hidden size or the D model. I'm going to refer to this dimension as hidden size. So here we have a vector embedding that has a size hidden size, and we have hidden size number of input features. Those linear layers are going to generate vectors of size hidden size. We have three different linear layers. We have what we call WK, WQ, and WV. Now, let's imagine that we're going to take the first token in the input sequence, and we're going to get its related vector representation in the token embedding. This vector is going to go through the three different linear layers, and it is going to generate three different vectors coming out of those three different linear layers. The vectors coming out of the different linear layers have a name. So the vectors coming out of the WK matrix are called the keys. The vectors coming out of the WQ matrix are called the queries. And the vectors coming out of the WV matrix are called the values. So we have a key, query, and value vectors coming from the three different linear layers. Now let's look at the second word in the input sequence. We have the word R, and the word R will have its vector representation in the token embedding. And by passing this vector representation into the three different linear layers, we're going to get a set of key query and values. We can repeat the process for all the tokens in the input sequence. So the word U will have its vector representation in the token embedding, and this will generate a new set of key query and value. Similarly, we take the word doing, we get its vector representation, and by passing through the three different linear layers, we get a new key, a query, and a value. Again, we take the last token in the input sequence, we get its vector representation, and we get its key, query, and value. So the size of the keys, queries, and values come from the choice that we made in the number of output features that we have in the different linear layers. In what I demonstrated so far, I showed some kind of iterative process. But in reality, everything is happening in parallel. So we can inject the whole input sequence as a tensor. We get a tensor output from the embedding, and we get tensor outputs from the different linear layers. So nothing is iterative. Everything happens at the same time. So now let's continue the process. We have keys, queries, and values. By using the keys and queries, we're going to build an interaction score between the different words. Now, we're going to take the first query and the first key, and we're going to build an interaction score between the word how and itself by taking the dot product between the first query and the first key. Now, we can do the same by looking at the first query and the second key. We're going to take a dot product between those two vectors, and this will give us an interaction score between the word how and the word are. We're going to continue this process by taking the first query and the third key, and we're going to take the dot product between those two vectors. This will give us an interaction score between the word how and the word you. We continue this process for all the different keys that we have for all the different words, and we obtain an interaction vector between the word how and all the other tokens in the input sequence. We can now iterate on the queries. Here we look at the second query, and we're going to get the interaction vector between the word R and all the other tokens in the input sequence. We iterate this process by moving to the next query, and we can do that for all the different tokens that are contained in the input sequence. In the end, we obtain a square matrix of interaction between the different tokens in the input sequence and those interactions represent how much the different tokens should pay attention to all the other tokens in the input sequence to predict whatever the model is trying to predict. 
Something that is important to understand is that nothing is iterative. We have a tensor keys and we have a tensor queries, and we can compute this matrix by taking a tensor multiplication between those two tensors. So the way we compute the different interaction scores is not iterative. It's something that is done in parallel when we take the tensor multiplications between the keys and queries, and these can easily be parallelized on GPUs. So now let's look at a bird view of what we just looked at. We're going to take this matrix of interactions and we're going to pass it through the softmax transformation. The softmax transformation is just a way to map those interactions into probabilities. So what we have is on each row, all the different elements of that row will sum to one. And this is similar to what we see in probabilities. This resulting matrix, that is a normalization of the interaction matrix, is what we call the self-attention. Additionally, this softmax transformation is also a way to provide some non-linearity in this self-attention layer. Now we're going to take the self-attention matrix and we're going to multiply it to the values. This will result in the hidden states coming out from the attention layer. I want to make sure that we understand what's happening with the values and the attentions. Let's consider specifically the token U and its resulting vectors. This token U will result into uh, one of the queries that is here, and we're going to compute all the keys and values for all the different tokens in the input sequence. If we multiply the keys and queries together, and if we normalize using the softmax transformation, we're going to get this self-attention matrix. The third vector in the self-attention matrix corresponds to this query here. So on that row, all the elements of that row sum to one. If we only consider the computations that happen for the token U, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the values that correspond to all the different tokens in the input sequence, and we're going to multiply those by the different attentions that we computed for the word U. Because the different attention sum to one, this is very similar to a weighted sum. So we're going to weigh the different values based on the way the different attentions have been computed. So if an attention resulting from the dot product between the query related to the word U and a key related to another token in the sentence is low, that means that we're going to put a low amount of weight for the value corresponding to that specific word. So if an attention related to another word is low, we're going to build a weighted average for the different values that will lower the importance of the value related to that word. The resulting hidden state corresponding to the word U is a weighted average of the different values based on the way the different attentions have been computed. So the keys and queries are going to provide us with self-attentions, and the self-attentions are going to tell us how much weight we should put on the different values when we compute a weighted average to get a resulting hidden state.